Hey guys, welcome back to the Girl Gone London channel. Today is a very British Christmas. If you're new here, my name is Kaylin. I'm an American expat in the UK. And today we are talking all about British Christmas words and phrases. So if you've seen my British Christmas traditions video, you'll recognize some of the words that I'm using, but I've come up with a list of very specific words and phrases associated with Christmas in the UK or associated with things that they might do around Christmas in the UK because believe it or not, things are different than what you might expect whether you're coming from the US or Canada or Australia. We all have different words when it comes to Christmas and these are the ones I've had to learn in the UK. First word, bobble. A bobble is a round Christmas decoration. So if they're talking about another type of ornament on a Christmas tree, they would call it a Christmas decoration or a Christmas tree decoration. But if you hear the word bauble, they're specifically talking about the rounded type of Christmas ornaments. Next one, Father Christmas. So Father Christmas historically was actually a different concept or a different person than Santa Claus. However, in recent times, they've become the same person. So Father Christmas is what the Brits more traditionally refer to Santa Claus as. Again, today he's the same, he is Santa, he's Father Christmas, and he comes to deliver presents on Christmas Day. Next one, Lapland. Now, the Brits think it's odd that the Americans are so sure that Santa Claus lives and is from the North Pole. They use the term Lapland, which is in the north of Finland, and that is where Santa Claus, or what they would refer to as Father Christmas, um, comes from and does his present making and sets off on Christmas Eve from. Now, I did ask my British husband whether he thinks that the North Pole and Lapland are culturally referred to as the same kind of place, and he did say that North Pole is used here, um, but Lapland is much more common, so it is an actual geographic place that you can go to, but it has kind of turned into a more mystical idea similar to the North Pole, which is where the Brits say that Father Christmas is from. Next one, Christmas jumper. So jumper is a sweater, if you are used to the American phrase, and this, what I'm wearing right now, is a Christmas jumper. So they would have Christmas jumper parties, you would wear your Christmas jumper on Christmas Day to Christmas dinner. So if you ever hear the phrase jumper or Christmas jumper, they're referring to a Christmas sweater. Next up is Boxing Day. So Boxing Day is not a mystical or made up phrase. It is the name for the holiday the day after Christmas Day. So the 26th of December is Boxing Day. I will have a video all about Boxing Day talking about the origins and what is actually done. Hint, there is no actual boxing, but I did want to mention it as a word around the holiday season in the UK to be aware of. So Boxing Day is the holiday the day after Christmas. Next up is a nickname for Christmas, which is Crimbo. I find this phrase really cringy, but Crimbo is definitely used across the UK as sort of a slang term for Christmas. So if you ever hear somebody mentioning Crimbo or Happy Crimbo, um, they are referring to Christmas. Next up is Chris Dingle services. So I will have a whole video again all about Chris Dingle services and what in the world a Chris Dingle is. A Chris Dingle is actually an orange with red ribbon around it and a candle that's meant to help people who go to the Chris Dingle service think about Jesus and the meaning of Christmas. Um, I will talk way more about the origins of this and where it comes from because Chris Dingle is definitely not something common across a lot of the US, um, but it definitely is a popular British Christmas tradition in churches. They would have a Chris Dingle service and Chris Dingle refers to the actual orange with the candle in it. So stay tuned for more videos where we will make a Chris Dingle together, but if you've never heard the term before, now you know Chris Dingle service refers to a specific holiday service that involves an orange, a candle, and some red ribbon. 
Another phrase that you'll probably get, but I wanted to mention is sprouts. So Brussels sprouts are a really common part of a lot of Christmas dinners here, and often they'll just refer to them as sprouts. So if you hear sprouts, they're probably not talking about bean sprouts, they're talking about Brussels sprouts, which are a really common thing to eat on Christmas day. Next up is the term Dickensian Christmas. So if you go back in history, the word Dickensian actually refers to uh, related to the poverty of Victoria times that Charles Dickens would have written about. However, when we pair it with the word Christmas and we talk about Dickensian Christmas markets or having a Dickensian Christmas, it's kind of taken on more of a meaning of traditional, classic, Victorian, a little bit magical, um, old-fashioned, old-timey. So it does refer to kind of the Charles Dickens era of Christmas, but of course when we talk about going to a Dickensian Christmas market, we're not referring to poverty, we're referring to something that is Victorian and classic and old-fashioned, in the best way possible. Along those same lines, you might hear the word Christmas fate. Now, a Christmas fate is like a Christmas fair. The word fate would be more commonly used, but if you picture an indoor, usually indoor, um, Christmas fair, um, if you had a summer fete, it would probably be an outdoor event, but again at Christmas uh, the weather is not very nice so people tend to hang out inside, but like the local school might have a Christmas fete where you go into the school and they have tons of stalls set up with people selling things or food offerings or different charities or events for the kids. So the term fete or Christmas fete is um, similar to a Christmas fair. And last up is something that is traditionally done at Christmas fates or fairs, and that's what's known as a tombola. So a tombola is basically an activity where you have a bunch of numbers in a cylindrical container, and there are prizes on a table that relate to the numbers that are in the container. So somebody comes by, they pay a small fee to go to the school or charity or whatever, and they pick a number, and uh, if they get a number that matches something, then they get to take that prize away. So if you hear the phrase tombola, that is what is traditionally happening. And again, they're very popular at a Christmas fete or fair. Okay, so that was a whistle stop tour of some of the most popular British Christmas phrases and words, which might be unfamiliar to you if you've never spent a Christmas in the UK. If you're interested in more videos about living in, traveling to, or experiencing a very British Christmas, definitely make sure to subscribe so that you get notified of my future videos. We've got lots more coming up for the holiday season and beyond. So if you enjoyed, again, give it a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.